Hey, so there it is. A final candle, a light, I'm holding up for the end of Google Reader. Um, <laughs> I guess people like me who use it regularly, we've all said it, we'll say it again. It's a huge mistake by Google. I mean, I understand it didn't have enough users, didn't have that critical, massive business. Um, but I don't know. See, this is a thing. This is a product that geeks like me liked. And, uh, you know, we always thought it was safe because it was on Google. I assume lots of people at Google used it. It's, it's a huge shock that it's gone. The reason it's gone is that not enough people used it. Um, it's a bit hard to get into. It, it takes a bit of figuring out. And because of that, it never quite got to that critical mass that you got with like Gmail or uh, other popular Google services like YouTube, which is acquired. But um, now it's now basically it's been taken over. There's a couple of uh, good uh, alternatives out there. The main ones seem to be the Dig Reader, but really the only real alternative um, seems to be Feedly. And the reason that it's Feedly is not just because it's got all the functions and everything that we're used to with Google Reader. It's because it's it's offering back-end APIs, which let uh, basically, for example, all my favorite apps, uh, my particular favorite app on um, to use as a reader on my iPhone, for example, is uh, this app called uh, Byline. Mm, I don't know how visible that's going to be. It's not going to be very visible. Visible. I'll, I'll put links uh, down below for this. Um, Byline is, is awesome. There's Flipboard. There's all these things which you can basically just plug in. Um, before it was Google Reader. Now you just sign in Feedly and it will take all your feeds and it will put them in these different presentation formats. Um, so what is good about RSS? The, the reason I'm making this video is that now that it's no longer really safe, I guess it never was safe, but it certainly isn't safe now. Now that it's gone from Google um, and it's out there in these small private companies, I think now more than ever it's important to make sure RSS survives because I think that's the real risk of this um, with pretty much Google cutting loose RSS altogether. This is the thing when it dumped like Buzz or when it dumped Wave, you know, all those elements went into other services. When it dumped um, Google Videos, it switched into YouTube. When it dumped Picasa, it, it switched into Google+. There is no switchover for, for RSS, which says that Google's abandoning it. And it's abandoning it because it never quite went mass market and they never quite figured out how to monetize it. And as much as that sucks, I think the people who are still carrying it on because they're people like me who cannot live without RSS, um, they're keeping it going. And I think now maybe people didn't feel the urgency to promote it because it was with Google and it was safe, but now now it's not with Google. Uh, I feel a sense of urgency to make sure that people find out how excellent this thing is. So here it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain to you a little bit about why I like RSS, why you should like RSS, and why you should go and install Feedly and the feeds that you should go and put on it to to get you started. So first of all, what is RSS? I mean, I think everyone knows a little RSS and the little orange kind of box on a lot of pages. Unfortunately, becoming less common now. People seem to be using their Facebook feed, friending on Facebook or following on Twitter and catching whatever links you can, you know, whatever comes up in your stream at the time. You miss 90% of the stuff like that. Plus, it's annoying having your feed clogged up where you can't tell the difference between what your friends are saying and what Gizmodo is telling you the latest story is. I don't like following stuff that I like to read uh, through Twitter. Uh, although, there was a great tool a while ago called Smarter, S-M-A-R-T-R. It's gone now. Um, but that was uh, a tool which would pass links and create a reader from links in, in Twitter, which which I loved. And I wish that uh, a tool like that would come back. Um, however, um, what's great about RSS? What's great about RSS is imagine on your iPad or, you know, um, uh, the reason I've got myself on here is not to look at myself, although I'm a fantastically good looking guy, but it's actually because I have the links on here. Um, they put under the uh, last video I did with Tofugu, um, these are the links I want to show to you guys. But, you know, the point is, it's like a magazine that you can basically always, at any time, it's always new, it's always got the latest articles or latest news of exactly what you want. Be it, and, and it's not just news. I mean, you can put in, for example, you can RSS subscribe to things like South Park or The Daily Show or Onion or a YouTube channel. Um, as well as, for example, and no, not just the BBC, it's not like you get all the BBC, you know, you can put in specific like rugby news or baseball news or news for your specific sports team. Um, you know, and this is the thing, for me, building it up, it took a lot of time, it was a lot of trial and error, I put a lot of small blogs on there, and this is another great thing about um, RSS, small blogs aren't, that aren't regular, people run by people like me, um, it means that 
you don't want to miss them when they put content up, but they're not going to post stuff every day. So, you know, you can go and check out the website every day and it won't be any, any different a lot of the time. Whereas when you've got an RSS reader, it, it gathers together all the stuff that is new and brings it to you so you don't have to go to those sites. And this is another thing, you know, I mean, for example, you can you can go to CNET and um, you can spend a whole day on CNET. It's a fantastic site. But, um, you know, if you want to read multiple sites or catch just the latest news, um, you know, you don't want to go to a whole bunch of pages. This is what I used to do, and this is what I haven't had to do since then. Flipboard, I, I think, is a great uh, visual example of uh, what, what you can do with RSS. Of course, with Flipboard, you know, it kind of is like an RSS reader. You can put all sorts of stuff into it. Um, but, for example, taking my... You know what, I haven't put Feedly in here yet, but... Uh, and I wonder if my Google Read even works anymore. But, for example, this is just news stories, which are constantly updated and I can zoom in and read any one and uh, they are all the stories that I want to look at. Um, I use the Byline app which is here um, and again okay that's not configured at the moment. I, I, got a, I do it on my iPhone but basically this is the thing. I used to spend hours a day on this because whenever you get a spare moment boom I've just got a whole bunch of stories and what I would put in are stories about um, geek stuff, new gadgets and stuff because that's that's what I like uh, stuff about Japan and blogs about Japan in English and in Japanese with my favorite blogs there's a few of those and cameras, I love cameras so I put in Petapixel um, and so the, the hard part is figuring out one, where the, where the, where the uh, good sites are uh, where to get the RSS feeds for them and it's, you have to save them one by one it's a little bit laborious and uh, you know it doesn't work by default unless you start putting stuff in and a lot of people probably might sign up for a reader account I think this probably happened with Google they'd put, sign up for a reader account and it would never, they'd never get it going um, so here it is, I'm going to give you what I think I mean, I've got more than hundreds of feeds on mine but here are the best ones that I think if you um, go and join Feedly or any other reader but I suggest Feedly go and put these links in right away and uh, you'll have an excellent reader of, of, and basically you'll be able to have a fantastic conversation with me because this is the stuff that I talk about so here it is, I'm going to put these links down below but this is what I recommend in terms of regularly updated latest news about stuff that I think is cool you know, if you follow my stuff you'll probably like this stuff too uh, for tech magazines there's three that I recommend there's uh, Engadget, Gizmodo and Petapixel Engadget and Gizmodo are kind of similar a little bit randomish, very gadget oriented. There's also another one called TechCrunch, which is more about the startup industry, very wordy. It's interesting, but I, I find I don't uh, favorite it so much. Um, Petapixel is fantastic. Petapixel is not just about cameras and photography. There's a lot of stuff like time lapses. A lot of Japan related content gets on there. So I find myself liking a lot of stuff there. And by the way, what, what, so what happens when I find something that I like? Well, you can click on, it used to be a star on Google Plus. With uh, Feedly, it's a save for later. But what you can use is you can use sites like IFTTT. Well, besides the fact that Feedly allows you to share to Google Plus, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and a bunch of other sites if you want to share those articles which I, I, I enjoy, it's a great conversation starter on stuff which I find interesting. Um, you can also use IFTTT, for example, to automatically tweet, you know, articles and stuff that you like, or to Facebook them, or whatever. So it's kind of a nice way of sharing content that you find, that you filter through, that, you know, is cool. And I, only, I try to save less than 10 a day, uh, sometimes I don't succeed. But those are the tech magazines that I like. Then I've got Japan blogs. Um, Japan-related blogs, I've got dozens, dozens of them, but the ones that I really recommend... Japan Probe, uh, controversial, but uh, I don't know, I, I like them, I've got similar perspective on, on a lot of things to them, I, I like what they do most of the time. Um, I have enjoyed reading the Wall Street Journal Japan real-time blogs lately, they've actually been pretty good, and they catch a lot of, uh, well, like the real-time theme says, they capture a lot of news flash Japanese news, which they put straight into English, um, with the WSJ perspective, but that is what it is. There's Nippon.com. Nippon.com is actually a translation of a, of a kind of it's a conservative uh, MPO from what I understand. Um, this is a site run by Durf, uh, Peter Durfee. I don't know if you guys know Durf. Some of you might know him from Twitter. Awesome guy. And he has put this, uh, he runs a translation team that puts these articles up. And, you know, some good, some not so good, but a lot of really kind of deep and, uh, you know, good topics about Japan by a fun, you know, set to kind of promote a deep understanding of Japan. So I think that's worthwhile. Uh, Japancrush.com, which basically translates my favorite um, Nichan aggregators uh, and translating the, the articles and the, the comments that follow them on these Nichan things. 
um, fantastic service that they do. I mean, if I if they're 80 hours in a day, I would I would do this myself, but there isn't, and I don't, and I love what these guys do. Put Japan Crush in. There's also some sister sites. There's Japan Smack and uh, Japan Smack. Sorry, China Smack and Korea Bang, and those are excellent as well. And I read those for fun. But for the Japan one, is Japan Crush, and it is excellent. Uh, I've also got Shisaku. Shisaku is a what is he? I think he's an academic or he's a think tank guy. He's a smart person, and he writes about Japanese politics. A little more partisan lately. He really doesn't like Abe. <laughs> he was a little bit less partisan, I think, because he's pro Democrat. But the Democrats are doing so badly. He was actually sounding quite balanced before. He's sounding less balanced now, but he still is one of the most insightful commentators on Japan politics I've ever seen. And of course, Torfugu.com, the blog I recommended yesterday. Um, and for Japanese sites, well, there's a bunch, but um, the two that I recommend go to Hatena Hot Entry Bookmarks. Again, I've got the link down below. And uh, go to um, uh, uh, Itai News, Itai News, which goes and picks up the hottest topics and the hottest political conversations and news conversations from Nichen. If you put these in, if you put these links in down below and follow the instructions that I've got below, you'll have an awesome reader, which uh, I warn you is probably going to take. I spent more time on Google Reader than I spent on YouTube, on Gmail, on a bunch of sites. And, you know, I think it's just the dumbest thing ever that it's gone, but it's gone. It is what it is. And uh, these people are picking up and, you know, support them. Go and go and have a look and, and, and figure out <laughs> where my days go. I love it on my iPhone because, you know, um, I can watch, I can read it on the subway any spare moment I find I'm reading and it means that you're up to date and, you know, you've always got, uh, you're always very well informed on Japan, um, which I think is a part if you're into the culture, if you're into the country, as always, you know, getting a sense of what's going on and uh, being able to have conversations about it and to inform people with, a, you know, with an informed perspective on stuff. So uh, these are what I recommend. Uh, RSS Rocks. Uh, can't say enough how disappointed I am that Google's killed Google Reader, but um, credit to them for making it, credit to them for making such a great product, uh, and credit to Feedly for basically um, transferring it and seeing that it lives on. I'm going to keep following Feedly, and I'm probably going to be a bit more evangelical about it now because I'm really sad that it's gone, and uh, I seriously recommend that you guys all follow it. So I am going to stop talking now. I don't think I've breathed. This is my fisheye lens on my GH1, a new perspective of my room. I hope you enjoyed it, and... Uh, some dramas, some uh, announcements, and various stuff coming up soon. That was a long video, but there we go. Okay, peace. Boom.